Wassail, welcome to Rune Revival. In this video, we'll be comparing Old English with Contemporary English to deduce how Anglo-Saxon football runes can be used to write today's English. As a reminder, Old English's consonants matched to runes as shown in this chart. If you want to know how they came to be that way, watch this prior video. For those of you who have been following this channel until now, please note that we will be using the information derived in this video to update our existing system. As part of that update, the doubling of consonants will, by and large, be eliminated. We'll tell you more about that in another video soon. Looking at the table, at this point we can eliminate the bottom row, as for most of us, the r trill has become the er approximant. Now, there are 12 consonant runes plus one digraph that can still be written exactly as the Anglo-Saxons of old would have written them. Just to clarify, we will henceforth be distinguishing the ng in singer from the ng in finger. Following the lead of footwork.com, we'll be using inga for the latter, as is logical. However, unlike them, we have a need to distinguish two of the fricative pairs. For the alveolars, s as in su and z as in zu, they can be distinguished by simply reinstating the elk's rune from elder futhark. Please note that the Anglo-Saxon futhark also has the rune stan for the st sound. Of course, if you don't like that rune, you can always just write seal tear instead. Before dealing with the other pair, let's address k. Despite chen being the original rune to make this sound, a split caused it to also be used for ch. Consequently, where k needed to be distinctly denoted, a mirrored bind rune was used instead. That bind rune, calc, was later incorporated into the Anglo-Saxon footwork as a full rune in its own right. So, in light of your feedback, rather than perpetuating the confusion for modern English footwork, let's just use calc for k. If you still want to use quail for k, then go right ahead, but otherwise only use calc for k. Those of you who know that Queen was originally spelt with the rune Chen may not like this idea, but please remember that Calc derives from Chen anyway, and you can still spell Queen with Calc Win if you don't want to use Quaoz. Moving back to the labial fricatives, we can apply the same idea the Anglo-Saxons applied to k to v. Only, to make learning easier, let's use feo for f and the bind rune for v. At this stage, while the runic community at large becomes familiar with it, it's important to remember that this character is a bind rune. To type it, you will need to type a zero width joiner between two feos. On the latest rune board, that can be accessed on desktop by pressing shift and spacebar simultaneously. On mobile, it is now the key to the left of the spacebar designated by this symbol. Next, given that one of the two runes used for g has multiple jobs, we can simplify things as we did for k by only using ga because it exclusively makes the g sound. Now let's look at these two rare sounds. They are the H in loch and the GH in right, as said by this Scot. Right. While recognizing that some accents still use these sounds, both are today exceedingly rare amongst native English speakers. So, for now we're going to conflate these sounds, but when it comes to which rune to use for them, We'll come back to that later in this video. Moving on to j as in July,
given that there are already two other options for Ye, a single Yivu rune can sufficiently identify this sound, thus eliminating the need for a digraph. As for the Y sound, both of these runes are included in the Anglo-Saxon rune poem. For reasons we'll discuss in the vowels section, we'll use the rune on the left when Y appears at the start of a syllable, but the rune on the right in all other positions, such as when it appears as a yod. For those of you who don't know what yods are, it's the sound made by the letter I in the word view. In Latin script, it often goes unwritten, but it is important in words like pew. To give you a better idea of what yods sound like, I'll now read some examples of words with yods in them. Music, nuisance, pew, beauty, stew, mixture, dune, cue, argue, few, view, enthuse, pursuit, Zeus, inhumane, million, rude, Tuesday. Most of us at least use some of these, but depending on your dialect, some of you may use more or fewer of them than others. It's worth noting that alveolars followed by yods can coalesce into their equivalent post-alveolars. If you can think of any better examples of words with yods in them, please leave them in the comments. Thank you. Although the rune ur was frequently used for the w sound in times gone by, as it serves another purpose as a vowel, this sound is better represented by win in most circumstances. As for the h sound in inhumane or Houston, aside from how the rune shown here only disputedly made this sound, it already has another purpose as a vowel. But most of us hear this sound as being h followed by a yod, so it may be better to write it using those runes. This idea can be extended to the post-alveolar ny sound for those who use it. Speaking of sounds not used in Old English, the j sound, as in illusion, has the same relationship to the sh sound, as in ship or illusion, as z, as in zoo, has to s, as in sue. That makes the logical digraph for this sound, elk's chin. While we're on digraphs, just because it fits well, I'm going to add the wh sound some speakers use in white to the box in the corner. That sound was historically written in runes as hail win. If you wish to use it, might we recommend writing it as a bind rune to limit confusion for readers. Similarly, if you need the sound of the Welsh double L in names, it can be written as Hail Lagu, either as a bind rune or unbound. Returning to the pair of rare sounds, given that a rare rune of uncertain sound exists, and in light of that rune's relationship to both k and g, that is calc and ga, might we suggest using that rune for these sounds? Even if you don't regularly say these sounds in your dialect, it could still come in useful for writing certain foreign names. As for the consonants unique to South African English, we'll address them in the video on the South African accent. Sorry for the wait, but we will be including clicks for you. For your convenience, Here's a summary with the extras added in grey boxes. Feel free to screenshot it. That's consonants done. Thanks for watching. Are you ready for vowels?